Hey guys, it's Obi. Uh, decided to do a video showing some of the stuff I've been working on um, as I've been attempting game development. Um, as you've probably seen in a previous video, I've been working on uh, Android development in particular, and uh, just finished learning Java for the for the first time. It took me about eight months to power through Java in 21 days. A little bit slower than I probably would have liked have gone through it, but I think I actually learned more by doing that. Um, anyways, I'll, the next book I picked up after that was uh, Mario Zekner's Beginning Android Games. Um, and one of the things he had in there was a snake game, a snake game called Mr. Nom. And uh, it's a pretty uh, basic little, kind of like Nibbles, you know, snake moves around. Snake eats an object, and when he eats the object, the snake increases his length by one unit, whatever the, the, the snake's units are. Um, really basic. Um, did not use OpenGL, did not use a lot of crazy um, you know, vector map or anything like that. Um, you know, it was like even more basic than like a 2D platform or a basic project like that. So. Uh, it's a good one to, to kind of break you into the concept of game development, not just Android game development, but game development in general. Uh, as part of that, you, you, you went through and we built two frameworks. Uh, first framework is up here, uh, this package here, and in that package you have you know your basic stuff that a game needs in order to run, video and uh, file input, output, and the graphics engine input, music. Um, screen controllers, uh, stuff like that. Below that, you can see the next package that was built is this implementation package, and it handles more of Android-related stuff. Um, and it kind of follows the whole object-oriented abstraction thing, where, I mean, this stuff is retardedly basic. I mean, if you, let me show you, actually, so you can see, like, the music was just got play and pause and stuff like that in it. I mean, it's, it's so retardedly basic that you really couldn't do much with it um, just like that. You would, it, it's just it's a base class that you pull in and, and use the methods of and, and it's separate and like when you actually implement it. So um, and that's what this stuff is. You got an accelerometer handler, you know. You know most smartphones have a uh, built-in accelerometer to pick up movement in three dimensions. Um, it has you know, the actual Android Android audio actually it has methods and stuff that tie into the SDK. Um, that's what all this stuff basically is. You know, your keyboard handler. And I mean, that's one of the things that you, uh, I've learned with developing for Android is you have to, it's not like iPhone where the iPhone, Apple controls the hardware really tightly. So you don't have to worry about it, whether or not, um, well, manufacturers put a keyboard on there. You don't have to worry about if it's an older device that only has single touch, uh, single capacitive touch instead of multi touch, um, so on and so forth. So you kind of have to build uh, a more generic game that can uh, be more adaptive to a wide variety of Android devices. Um, I mean, it's even like to show how that. that it affects your design. I mean, this res folder here controls all the icons that show up on uh, the phone after the, the app installs. You have to have ones that are like 48 by 40, 32 by 30. I think there's even 72 by 72 or something. Um, just a bunch of different like resolutions of icons because screen's pixel densities are all different. So it's there's a lot to consider. Um, when you target a smartphone as a platform, uh, if I was, I would think if I was developing a Java game for PC, which I don't think I would ever actually voluntarily want to use Java on a PC game. But anyways, I wouldn't have to worry about that so much because, um, you know, as long as you were targeting OpenGL and, and you were targeting a base Java uh, version, you don't have to worry about whether or not 
there's a keyboard on a computer because most computers have keyboards. Um, so that kind of comes to your default input method. Uh, same thing, keyboard and mouse. Like every computer's got a keyboard and mouse or something that acts as a keyboard and mouse. Well, on a smartphone, it could have a keyboard, it could have a touchscreen, it could have both. Um, I mean, the, the really, uh, it, it kind of makes you think a little bit harder about your game design and what the game's going to look like and how people are going to interact with it. You know, what happens if you're playing some your, someone's playing your game and all of a sudden they decide that, you know, they're going to tip the phone sideways? Well, are you going to support rotation? Is that game going to rotate smoothly and just keep going and act like nothing happened? Um, you definitely need a video for that, by the way. Don't ever try that in cameras. I don't even imagine cameras can handle that smoothly. Um, or are you just going to lock the screen and say, you know, screw you. You, you tilt your phone. I didn't want you to tilt your phone. So, you know, that's that's that. You have to hold your, your screen in this particular orientation if you're going to play the game. Or if, you know, are you going to allow them to use the keyboard as well as using a touch screen? Are you going to have on-screen controls that can disappear, you know, if, if they decide they want to use the keyboard? Um, it's just design. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it starts making you think. Back to the, the little worm game here. We got, uh, this is the graphics, the Android graphics section I was talking about. And this is... This game uses something that's uh, it's called Canvas. Um, it's very basic, literally painting bitmaps on bitmaps and uh, moving them around. And that's pretty much the sum total of what Canvas is. It's dog slow. Um, you're not switch. You're not doing like you know the fast buffer swaps and and all that sort of stuff you get to do with OpenGL. It's it's just literally. I'm moving and I'm repainting this here, and I'm repainting this here, and I'm repainting this here. And as it moves across the screen, it, it, you can tell that it's repainting because it's that slow. Um, all those complaints aside, it was really, I mean, I didn't know anything about graphics programming, so if you had thrown me straight into OpenGL, I probably would have cried. Uh, this was a good way to break me into what goes into um, graphics programming. I mean, like I, know, I would never have known you had to like actually set up telling the program what format you're pulling stuff from. You know, that's what all this is down here. Um, it's pretty cool, all in all. And um, I learned a lot as I went through that book about how graphics are handled in the game. And uh, and I'm learning a lot now as I move forward through that book, and I'm learning more about the GL, about just you know how. Uh, the closer you get to the metal, the um, faster the, your graphics engine will run. I mean, the, the more you're able to actually talk to the GPU or talk to whatever the graphics uh, rendering agent is on the hardware, uh, the better control you have as a programmer. But at the same time, complexity seems to scale up every time you cut through one layer of abstraction. It's like there's a whole new layer of things to learn. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, this is the multi-touch handler. Um, since it's a smartphone, you have to touch the phone to do things. Um, but that's the, what I was talking about before with the key, you know, knowing what they're using. Well, you can always pretty much guarantee they're going to have a touch screen on an Android device. That's part of what Google requires for you to use Android, or I guess whatever the Android governing body, because it's not really Google, but Google kind of is the power behind the throne with it. Um, they dictate that every phone has to have a touch screen. Um, and Google, anything that's Google branded, like, um, has access to the Google market and, and access to the Google apps has to have a touch screen. So you can kind of build any app for Android that you're going to put on the Google market. You can say, oh, you know, screw the keyboard, I want to go make it screen enabled, and that's it. And, uh, you'll, you'll hit a wide target that way. Uh, the next thing that I have here, I mean, I could go with this, but it's basically, it's just, it's, it's Euclidean geometry. It's just X and Ys, and did you register a touch event? Oh, I registered a touch event, and I registered it here. That's what's going on. Um, and this is the actual snake that's in the game. Uh, this is coming out of this package here, the, the jacket hat package. Um, 
can see it's snakes in array list. It starts out with three parts. Every time he eats a part, which is right here, he adds another part at the end. 